Hey guys, Floodmon14 here. It's just gonna be a quick video here. Um, I didn't really even think of what I wanted to say before, but uh, I'm sure a lot of you have heard that, uh, and you see that I do a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh content on this channel. Uh, I just wanted to say rest in peace to, uh, you know, Kazuki Takahashi, the creator of Yu-Gi-Oh. I could go over a lot of things, you know, like people typically do, like, you know, like, for example, like, you know, when he was born, uh, you know, about the manga and what he created and, you know, his legacy, the legacy he'll left, leave behind. I, I, I'm going to skip all that. I mean, you can Google it. I mean, as, you know, as lazy as that sounds, you can Google Kazuki Takahashi and just, I mean, this is what he created, basically Yu-Gi-Oh! And basically 85% of the content of this channel is, uh, you know due to my love for the game that he created. Um, but uh, most people know, one thing I will talk about is that the reason he created the Yu-Gi-Oh! manga in the first place, oh, well, he was kind of bored, you know, and, um, you know, really wanted to make something that, uh, you know, turn that down a little bit. Uh, he wanted to make something that involved playing games with other people, you know, to make uh, new friendships. Um, now, I'm not sure about Kazuki Takahashi's, you know, you know, like, was he popular in high school? Was he not popular? Was he, you know, I don't really know much about his history. I mean, if you really want in-depth stuff like that, he's famous. You can look it up, but, um, long story short, I will talk about this, though. The themes of... It, of Yu-Gi-Oh! in the show, and it's pretty obvious, you know, what those themes are. You know, those themes are like, you know, love, friendship, even forgiveness is a pretty big theme in Yu-Gi-Oh! Because, for example, uh, now, if you didn't bring the manga, you didn't see half of what uh, Kaiba, Seto Kaiba, uh, this guy right here, I'll just pull this pack off the wall real quick, you didn't really see half of what this guy right here did to uh, Yugi and friends. Uh, so not a lot of people know about Death T, which was, it was an arc in the manga, but long story short, we saw kind of the, you know, abridged version of what uh, Kaiba did to Yugi and friends in the first episode. Um, that doesn't really cover half of what Kaiba, well, and Mokuba did. Uh, but long story short, um, Think about this, like, after all that Kaiba put Yugi through, you know, uh, but, you know, during Battle City and even toward the end of Battle City, you know, it was a pretty big plot point that, you know, Yugi considered Kaiba his friend, despite all the hardship he put him through. Um, but yeah, forgiveness, uh, friendship, um, you know, and just general, like, puzzle solving and mysteries. Uh, there's, I think there's one other big theme of Yu-Gi-Oh that I'm not thinking of. Oh, courage, right. The courage to, I mean, because that's the difference between, you know, little Yu-Gi and Yami Yu-Gi. You know, one has, you know, courage and all the assets needed to, you know, conquer the obstacles in the way, the fears and whatnot. And, and of course, the, the Egyptian themes, I mean, as you see, it's Shizu Ishtar here. This is a theme from uh, Eternal Duel of Soul, by the way. A very sad theme, by the way. So I thought I'd play it today. Um, but yeah, but yeah, the, there's a lot that runs throughout the show as far as the Egyptian mythology and the meaning behind that. Uh, Kazuki Takahashi was obviously inspired by some of that. I'm not really going to get into that, but... Because um, <laughs> frankly, it'd be a five-hour long video if I did. But... I <laughs> But the things I can get into are those things I talked about, you know, friendship, courage, and forgiveness. To be quite frank, all, all of us, you know, who like Yu-Gi-Oh, or all of us in general in life, could use more of those three things. And of those three, I'd say the hardest is probably forgiveness. Um... But yeah, I just want to encourage you all today. Uh, you don't even have to be a fan of Yu-Gi-Oh! or card games or whatever, but if there's someone in your life who you really, you know, you've been struggling to forgive and, you know, move on with, you know, as far as your relationship, um, 
yeah, I encourage you to forgive them. You don't necessarily have to become their best friend. That's not what I'm saying. But I am saying it's important for yourself and your own health to just, you know, kind of forgive them and move on, you know. Uh, the other thing is uh, friendships. So I know a lot of kids are going to be back to school uh, before you know it, before you blink. A lot of kids will be back to school. Uh, and I know a, a lot of kids like Yu-Gi-Oh! So what I would like to suggest... Not that you become friends with everybody. That's... I mean, if you want to, that's, that's your call. But one thing I would suggest... And this is something little Yugi would do, is like, you know, the kids that are being, you know, bullied or picked on, and, and this was touched on in the manga even, I, I remember chapters like this, where Yugi would basically, you know, he was just the nicest kid, you know what I mean? That's that's little Yugi to a T, not that guy. You know, the Pharaoh's a little more discerning, he's a little more, you know, wise in his years, but uh, little Yugi, he's basically the kind of gullible, you know, you know, anime protagonist, but he would be friends with anybody. Uh, sometimes I can get you into trouble. Hey, there's a lesson for you. I, I don't know. Maybe someone need to hear that. But, uh, yeah. These are the things I can talk about. But uh, one thing I would advise also, you know, if you really want to honor Kazuki Takahashi's legacy, uh, try being nice to, like I said, not everybody, but, you know, someone who, you can obviously tell when someone's having a horrible day. A horrendous day you know it's it's all over their face it's in their body language it's you know and for example like you're going to school let's say you're a kid in elementary you know a kid acts happy all the time all the time for once they come to class and they're quiet and not just through you know first period second class you know third you know all the way to fifth you know after lunch so you know it's you know it's like oh it's not that they're hungry and they're just you know no something's clearly wrong with We'll just make up this person's name, uh, Agatha. Something's wrong with Agatha. You know, she's normally, you know, she's got bubbly personality, and yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like, well, like I say, you, you don't instantly become friends with her, and that's not what I'm saying. But you, maybe you just say, hey, uh, you seem kind of different today. Everything okay? You know what I mean? That's how friendship starts. So just look out for each other, be good to each other. That's it. I mean... That's something I can touch on, you know, and, and I realize a lot of us have, you know, and I can speak to this more than anybody, having bipolar disorder myself, a lot of us have anxiety disorders and, you know, it's just, it's, it's hard, man, it, it really is for some of us, it's, you know, a hundred times harder than others, but, you know, um, just try, and if you can't find something to say, write a note and slide it. And, hey, if they read it, fine. If they don't, oh, well. I mean, you tried, right? You tried. You tried to help them out. I, that's that's the most you can do. So those are the things I can speak to. Now, as far as courage, uh, man, that's probably the hardest part for me to speak to. Because, personally, I still don't really have as much courage as I'd like. But... One thing I will say, um, being someone who has bipolar disorder, there are days where, you know, you feel a lot better than you normally would. I mean, these days are pretty rare. I mean, for me, I'd say it's about three out of a hundred, you know, about three out of a hundred days in a row, I'll feel pretty confident or I'll, I'll feel pretty, I'll feel like talking more than I usually do to strangers, you know what I mean? Because obviously, you know, me when I let's play, that's not the real me, man. I'm not usually happy and joking and talking like, you put me in a room of a hundred strangers, right? I'm just going to be like, you know, this is my mind inside. I'm like, you know, I'm literally like shaking, bro. But like, you know, uh, three out of the hundred days... I'll be fine. You know, I'll just be normal and my anxiety won't be so bad. But, like, take advantage of those days, first of all. And second of all, try to be, I wouldn't say confident, but try to, try to throw what you want to say and do. You know, even if you are anxious, just try to grin and bear it, basically. 
as cliche as that sounds, you know, and I know it's not nearly always that easy, trust me. I, of all people, know. But just try to... When I'm really, 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 really super anxious, you try to... You don't try to think about the next hundred moments. You think about the next moment, think about the next moment. And it's just like, you tell yourself, hey, like, for example, let's say I work at a fast food job and I just, I'm so anxious I can't even greet a customer. You just say to yourself, hey, I'm gonna try to greet the next customer. I'm gonna tell the next customer good day. I'm gonna try to tell the next customer, hi, how are you? You know, just live in the moment, so to speak. And I know we're already at 11 minutes, but that's basically all I wanted to say, man, is that uh, Kazuki Takahashi, you know, you did some great things, man. I mean, you, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! is a well, w worldwide success. And, you know, part of what made it that success are those themes, you know, throughout his uh, show uh, or throughout his anime, his uh, manga. Uh, and he worked hard on it and it paid off. Um, also, he started pretty young as far as uh, being a manga writer. I think he started at like 20 or 22. Don't quote me. Ex again, you can look up the exact dates if you want. I'm not gonna. The, the points I'm making are it's never too young to start your dream. It's never too, you're never too young. Work hard on your dream. Work hard on your dream like uh, Kazuki Takahashi did, man. Because that guy, I mean, you can tell he put in a lot of work. Uh, and not just with the card game, there were other games, you know, there's a reason Yugi's called the king of games. Well, Kazuki Takahashi, he had, like, so many, like, different, you know, Yami no games, you know, in his manga. Uh, you know, you don't have to be familiar with 100% of them, but long story short, you can just tell he worked so hard on his manga. And that's what I want to encourage you all to do. You know, if you're a, if you're a kid or whatever, and you want to be like Kazuki Takahashi, you want to create a, a new anime, a new manga, work as, on it as hard as you can, you know, just put your all into it, because it definitely shows, you know. Uh, but that's it, guys. I think that's really all I wanted to say is just, you know, rest in peace, and obviously, I highly appreciate him for everything he's done. You know, as you can see, you know, here, and this isn't even half of, you know, my Yu-Gi-Oh merch, you know, obviously, but I've been collecting cards for ever since my sister, well, I guess I'll just explain my history, because some of you might only see this video, but my sister um, bought Eliz Elizabeth, she bought me the first, well, she bought me five of the first six sets in the game. Uh, huh, maybe I'll, I'll do an album thing and show off some of my cards later today. I don't know if you guys would like that or not, you know. Um, but yeah, you know, obviously I'm a pretty big fan, you know. For example, like, some of these are from early sets, like, you know, Dark Jeroid, all kind of stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah, you can see, like, Makura's cards. There's a lot I could talk about, but like I said, you know, he did his thing, man. And, uh... Those are the themes throughout, you know, friendship, courage, and, uh, f you know, forgiveness, and, you know, the Egyptian mythology, so. And, and the art, I mean, even if you don't like, for example, if you don't like the anime and you don't like, you know, learning about the card game, I mean, look at the art and some of these, like, just, you know, the art is just out of this world. And to design, you know, so many unique things is really, that's what, I mean, I could never draw art like this, you know what I'm saying? But the art is just simply, it's beautiful. And I mean, to some people, that's what speaks to them about Yu-Gi-Oh! Simply the art itself. You know, some people like me, they like to collect. Some people just like, you know. And like, some of my best memories in high school, well, not I wouldn't say all of my best memories. I'd say about... 40% of them are based in Yu-Gi-Oh, you know, just sitting at the table at recess and, you know. Um, but let me, th I, one thing I will say is some of my best friends to this day, they don't necessarily play Yu-Gi-Oh, but um, that's how I met them. That's how I met them, you know. Yeah, yeah, pretty much, yeah. And that's thanks to Kazuki Takahashi, man. I mean, it's just, you know, it's just something to do, but, um, yeah. So, 
I just want to say thank you, pretty much. I mean, that's that's what I want to say. But uh, yeah. So we're gonna um, let the video loop, you know, one more time on this theme, the Ishizu Ishtar theme from Eternal Duel of Soul. We'll let it loop one more time. And we're just going to have a moment of silence here toward the end. But that's really all I wanted to talk about, guys. So, yeah. Thank you all for joining me. And I'll see you all next time. Be good to each other. guys well we're back to the end of the loop but uh yeah thanks for everything kazuki takahashi i'll see you guys all next time have a good day